everyone! Uh, we are going to be doing a pattern out of the Beginner's Guide to Bobbin Lace by Gillian Dye and Adrian Thunder. Today's uh, video is going to be the Torshan bookmark with diamonds, which is found on page 38. And on the right hand side, uh, this is the pattern from the book that I copied and printed onto cardboard stock. And then here is a worked pattern of it. Um, so we're going to have these passives on the side, kind of going through as a bit of a um, ornamentation. And then these middle areas are going to be diamonds. Um, we are going to be alternating the stitches on the diamonds. So this one is going to be our cloth stitch diamonds followed by the half stitch and just kind of alternating through just to kind of give it a different um, view and look and then we will have our grounds kind of surrounding our diamonds and then finishing off with a braid and then wrap around with some little tassels on the end. So with this pattern um, you are going to need a pillow uh, the pricking, and then you will need uh, your cover cloths for your bobbins, um, one for to cover your work. Um, I tend to kind of put it in the middle so you don't want it too far up. Um, you also don't want it too far down. Um, kind of right in the middle lets your bobbins hang nicely um, and then as we work through we'll kind of scooch our cloth cover cloth down as we need. Um, so you have your pricking, your cover cloth, you'll need your bobbins uh, wound, uh, you're going to need 12 pairs with one color um, of, in the book it calls it dark blue, today it's going to be green and then four pairs of mid-blue they have in the book, but it'll be orange today as a nice little contrast to the green. Um, you're going to have one of your dark blue pairs have 48 inches of thread on it. Um, that'll be the worker pair. And that comes in at pin eight. Um, and then all the other dark blues will have 40 inches of thread on them. And then our passives are just need uh, 24 inches um, for them because they're only being used down the sides. So with that, let's get started. So with this pattern, um, we are going to put on all of our bobbins, uh, similar to the Torshan ground bookmark um, on page 30. Um, so we're going to have temporary pins in A and B. Um, I tend to use these glass uh, beads uh, on them just so I know I'm taking them off uh, pretty, like they're not there permanently like the other pins will be. So we're going to start by placing, um, getting our two main colors we want um, for this. In the book they call it dark blue. I have a nice little um, green here. And we're going to place one on A, one on B, and then we are going to do a half stitch, so a cross, and then a twist, and then we are going to pin, so we're going to pin straight up at one. So pin, making sure that the pin is kind of angled a little bit away from you, um, because my camera is slightly angled, it looks straight, but I promise you it's not. And then we just close that pin with a cross twist and then we just pull up our temporary pins to release those threads and repin it A and B and then we just tighten that and then we've hung on two pairs pretty easily. And we're going to continue down um, doing the next one so at number two do it um, Hang one on A, do your ground stitch, a cross twist, and then pin. And we're going to do this same adding bobbins all the way down on this left side until we reach 
number six here. And making sure that you're not getting the bobbin with the longer thread on it, that is going to be added to uh, pin hole eight on the other side. So when you're winding your bobbins, just making sure that you've um, kept that one separately somehow or marked it for yourself. Um, I have a holder that I just put it away from all the other greens. Um, so however you do to keep track, just make sure that you're saving that one. And then um, as we're going through, um, the A tends to get a little cramped as I go through here. So I just kind of move my pin out to the end, just kind of make it easier to add it um, for myself. You can keep it at A if you like it like that, but it's not against the rules to do it out a little bit. Uh, move that temporary pin hole around as long as it's not interfering with your actual pricking pattern. I'm going to do our last one here at six. These are a little short, so I'm just going to lengthen them. can get rid of that temporary pin since we won't need it anymore and then I'm just gonna kind of lengthen these bobbins um, just so they're kind of a little bit longer not as crimped and move them off to the side since we'll now need to add the right hand side down I'm lengthening them just because we're going to have um, 16 pairs total on our pillow helps to kind of give us a little bit of room, a little bit of space, um, so we can kind of move our bobbins around. And we'll start at seven, doing the same thing, but this time with this guy. Again, these are a little short. I tend to wind my bobbins um, off shorter just because it's easier to lengthen, but for me it's a bit of a struggle to shorten, so that is why I do them a little shorter and then just lengthen them as I go. Alright, and now that we are at pin 8, make sure you're grabbing that longer um, thread bobbin pair because I'll be our worker pair. It's not a lot more, um, so it's hard to tell if you don't space it out, like, because you have 48 versus 40, so just eight more inches on it, um, which sometimes is not that noticeable. And we are gonna keep going until we reach number 11. And of course, if your hitch falls off, um, you can just wrap it again. So you wrap it around your finger, wrap it around the bobbin, and then slip that over and get your hitch back. So we've crossed, and then we twist. Okay. Let's, all right, so we're here. Cross, twist. And then we're going to do ten. to do our last one, number 11. Oh, I'm sorry guys, I 
didn't realize that pin was out of the picture, but um, when I just moved it from B, I just moved it out on the pillow a little bit. Um, sorry, I didn't notice that quicker. have all of our pairs on. We can move this temporary guy. And now we are going to do uh, some ground stitches to kind of get our bookmark started. So we're going to start at number 12 and you'll just kind of move your bobbins over so you just have the two in the center one coming from three and then one from seven these will cross and get us to that 12. so our ground stitch is going to be a half stitch pin half stitch and the half stitch is just a cross twist that is one half stitch we pin and then do cross twist and we move on down to 13 and we're gonna just do ground stitches from 12 to 20. So just keep going. And the book um, alternates between calling the stitches names, um, using the acronyms C for cross, T for twist, um, they spell out the full word pin, but you'll see some patterns that will use CTPCT. -C That's just cross twist pin cross twist or half stitch pin half stitch. Um, you will see that in different patterns as you go along. I'm just going to lengthen these guys so they're a little bit more on the same. Alright, and then since that guy was 16, we're not going to do this one. Um, this pair is going to be used to bring in the passives later, so we're just going to wait on that. But we're going to scooch over and do the ground stitch on the right side. And that right side, we're going to go 17 to 20. Um, so again, you're going to bring the guy that was on 12 that right side and then bring the one from eight and then they'll come together in a cross um, cloth stitch and we'll just go right on down the line. And again, we're not going to continue. This guy is going to wait to bring in the passives. Um, and then once we are done with 20, we are going to start our diamonds. So we're going to move our bobbins over to kind of give us that working space in the middle. So using our middle two pairs, or the pairs um, one from 13, one from 17, we're going to start the diamond. So we're going to work a cloth stitch, which is a cross twist cross. Tighten that up a little bit to make it easier to pin. And then we're going to pin at 21, which is that top of the pin. And then we're going to close that pin with a cloth stitch again. So cross twist cross. And that closes our 
hidden at the beginning of our diamond. And going forward, the guys on our left is going to be our worker pair. So we are going to work a cloth stitch from this one through this one and then picking up a new one. So just kind of going across the line. So cross, twist, cross. We're not going to pin here. We're just going to continue bringing in that next pair over. And then once we have brought that pair, we are now going to twist our worker pairs um, before we pin. And then we are going to pin at 22. And just kind of tighten everything up a little bit and then cross, twist, cross, tighten that and then work through here. And then bringing in one here. Again, we're going to twist and then pin. sometimes I like kind of moving the bobbins that aren't being worked in yet so I know which pairs are within the diamonds that I'm currently working. Um, you can also use like your glass bead pins to kind of um, partition your bobbins as well. Um, usually just leaving a space is easiest for me. So then we do a cloth cross twist cross and just going back through. And at 24, we're going to pick up a new pair and then make sure to twist. You only need to twist once and pin. And then we go back to the left. And again, we're going to pick up a pair here at 25 and twist. And then just kind of tightening, making sure tension is good. And then going back through. And again at 26, we're going to bring in a pair. And you can kind of see since our worker pairs are doing more back and forth than the uh, passives down the middle of our diamonds, the bobbins are getting shorter, so just make sure to lengthen as you need um, to give you more space to work with that worker pair. And we go back through. And at 27, we bring in a new pair and make sure to twist our workers. All right, and then we're gonna head back through 
and this 27 is our widest part so as we go back through we are going to actually leave out a guy so this um, rightmost side we are going to end up leaving out so since we're going to leave him out I'm just going to move it out of the way so I know that when I get to this guy we'll pin So here we're going to do our cloth stitch, twist, and then pin at 28. It's not marked, but we know since we just did 27, it is going to be 28. going to go back to the left again we're going to be leaving a pair out so this guy on the leftmost side we can move away and um, go through Again, we're going to be leaving out a pair, so we'll just move that guy off to the side. heading back to the left again, leaving out a pair. we are finished with the diamond and as you can see um, as we're coming out of the diamond all of these uh, pairs have parallels so we just need to make sure we add a twist to them um, so just kind of go through so this guy is the first one to come out um, you see here we have a twist these guys are parallel so we'll just twist this and then the next one through both sides it looks like that guy had a twist and this guy does not all right and then since we've twisted all of our pairs we can now bring in our passives and we're going to start on C so we're again going to need a temporary pin on C actually I misspoke this is not a temporary pin um, it's just going to be a normal pin because this is the one that we're going to hang our passives on. So you're going to grab two passives. Um, I think in the book they call them mid blue. Um, I'm using orange as a nice little bright contrast to green. And we're going to put them side by side, lengthen it a little bit, alright, 
So they're side by side. Um, and then we are going to take our guy here that was on six that we didn't work into the diamond and we're going to do a cloth stitch through our passives. So the cloth stitch again is a cross, twist, cross, cross, twist, cross. And now we're going to twist three times on this worker green. So one, two, three. And then we are going to pin at 33 here. I'm just going to tension these orange ones a little bit so it doesn't bubble. Okay. And then we're going to work claw stitch back. Tighten. All right, and now we are going to do a twist since we have this parallel thread again. So twist, and now we're going to do a ground stitch at 34. So this is just your normal cross twist. So no extra cross pin. And tightening and cross twist. And then you just might have to remind these passives that they are going straight. And with this, we're going to go through our passives and do no 35. So again, we're going back to the cross twist cross or that cloth stitch. And then we're going to twist three times and pin and then go back. And again, we want to make sure we twist the guys coming back. And then we are going to do a ground stitch on 36 first and then 37. So with 36, you're going to take the guy um, that was on the outside and you're going to take the one coming from the diamond and we're going to do a ground stitch. And do 37 again with a ground stitch. Alright, and then we are going to do our cloth stitch through our passives. Twist three times. And then pin at 38. Come back through. twist and then we're going to leave that for now and and we're going to continue doing our ground stitches in this area until we've done this triangle here um, and then once we do that we'll go and do that right side And as we work, we're going to work in diagonal lines. So from the um, diamond, we're going to work down through till we reach the passives, bring it back, and then come and do the next line um, until we finished the little groundwork here.
sorry about that. Uh, that was my cat coming in to announce she wants cuddles. Um, so since we've done a cloth stitch here, we're going to twist three times and then pin and go back through. So she is an older kitty, about 12. Um, her name is Rukia, and she was napping quite happily in the other room. Um, it's almost, while well, I'm recording this, it's almost time for dinner, about like an hour until dinner for them. And she decided that she either wants cuddles or dinner now. Um, and usually I leave the door closed, but my other cat, Thor, wanted to be with mom today. Um, so I had the door open so he could be in the room with me, telling him that if any of his siblings, um, he has a sister, Rukia, and then a brother, Loki, um, if either of them came and made trouble, AKA noise, then he would have to go and have the door would close. Well, I mean, he could stay if he wanted, but he does not like staying in a room with the door closed, even if I'm there with him. Um, he likes free range of the house. So I apologize for that lovely announcement. And if you have pets like me, that's why having a cover cloth when you're taking a break or not actively working on um, your piece is very important. It keeps the dander, any kind of pet hair dander from getting in your lace working on it. Um, we keep them pretty brushed so if they're in here there's not a lot going through the air. but. Um, you want to make sure that you're keeping your lace safe from any kind of hairs, dirt, all of that fun stuff. And we are on our last row before going to the right side. And I'm just going to extend these bobbins. To finish with a twist here and since we've done that ground um, if we were to continue we'd head into the diamond um, so we want to do this ground next before starting our next diamond all right so we're just going to move our bobbins on the left side out of the way and we're going to start by hanging those passives on D, similar to how we did it with C. Now I'm just extending my bobbins um, since I know they'll get worked in, get shorter as they go and they're already a little on the short side. Alright. 
So first we'll start by putting a pin at D and then hanging our passive pairs next to each other. So one and then we'll put the second one and so they're next to each other, one's over the other. Again, they're a little short, so I'm just going to elongate them. And then we'll do how we did on the left-hand side. We'll take this guy um, from 11 and do our cloth stitches through the two passives. So cross, twist, cross, cross, twist, cross, twist three times. Tighten it up and then pin at E. And then go back. And twist our ring pair. Tighten it. Tension. And then we're going to do a ground stitch here, from here, and there. could do how we did on the left side where we take this out and then do our um, ground after a couple of but I'm going to do um, this ground diagonal first and just kind of going through until we get to that bottom And then just remember um, not to continue into that diamond. Um, so that diamond starts here, which is the next guy. If we kept going on this diagonal, it'd be through here. Um, we are not going to do that quite yet. So we're gonna go back to the top here and then continue that next line. So first we'll have to go through our passives with the outside. Remember to twist three times. And we'll close, go back through. Cross, twist, cross, uh, make sure to twist. Right, and then we're going to continue through.
And then we'll leave that and we'll go and do our next diamond. Move our bobbins out of the way until we have it separated through the middle. And with this new diamond, um, we are going to alternate our stitching. So up here we did a cloth stitch diamond. Uh, down here we are going to be doing a half stitch diamond so just kind of make sure um, if you're following the pattern that you switch it and don't do exactly the same as the first one so again we're going to take pairs from either side of F in the middle and we are going to do a half stitch which is a cross twist pin at F then do a cross twist. And then our left guy is going to be our worker pair and we're going to bring in one. So we are going to work a half stitch and then another half stitch. And then we are going to pin. And the um, Pairs that have been together up until now are going to kind of separate, so don't let that uh, scare you. It's okay. Um, everything will come together in the end. Um, so again, we're going to close that. So half stitch. And then go through. And then pick up one. and going to go back through and we don't have to twist um, when we are pinning this time 
because um, we aren't doing a cloth stitch, so we aren't losing a twist anywhere. So just, um, you don't need any extra twists anywhere. And we're going to keep bringing in pairs until we reach that widest part. Um, and then we'll start throwing out pairs. And just making sure you're tensioning as you go um, so that you have good tension everywhere but not over tensioning. And bringing in a pair. And this is our last one we're going to bring in because um, it's our widest part. You should have um, seven pairs in your diamonds. So just um, make sure you're not over under pairing yourself. And you can see we have um, our worker here, the one we brought in. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So since we have seven here, we are good. We don't need to bring in any more, um, but we are going to start throwing them out. So again, since I have this space here to kind of delineate where my diamond bobbins is, um, since we're gonna throw out, I'm gonna move this outside guy, and just move it over having that space between them. So I know to pin when I get to this bobbin. And just go back through. Lengthen any bobbins that you need. And then we'll close. And again, we're going to be throwing out um, this time from the left side. So I'll move this guy over and have that space here and just go on back through with half stitches. And then we have finished our diamond and we go and do our ground stitches. Um, and if you remember from the first diamond that we did cloth stitches, we had to twist all of the pairs coming out um, because they were parallel. As you can see, these are twisted coming out. Um, so we don't actually have to twist them. 
uh, similar to how we didn't have to twist at the pin. Um, since they're twisted from that half stitch, we're good. We can just continue on and doing the ground stitch. So we'll do the left hand ground next. I'm going to have to move my cover cloth down a bit to work this side. And since we're going to do the full triangle, I'm just going to open it down there. Um, and what I mean by triangle, as you can kind of see in the pattern, um, we have this area here from the next diamond. Um, so this triangle that kind of outlines that diamond space, we're going to be working in ground stitches and doing that passives through. And we're going to do um, our diagonals. Uh, so we were doing this diagonal here and stopped here. So we're going to continue this diagonal down um, and going that way. And making sure that you um, do your ground up until the diamond, but not including the diamond. Um, so just make sure you're doing, keeping track of that. And because we already did the passives here on the second line, we start the passive there, we can just continue down. And because we need to work through our passives first, we're going to do that next. So remember, it's a cloth stitch here. Cross, twist, cross through the two pairs. Then we're going to twist three times. Sure to twist.
go through the other way. Twist. And we are done with that ground, so we're going to go over to the right hand side, moving your bobbins in order along the way. Lengthening as you need. So we'll go over. And again, um, we had started a little bit on this row, so we're just going to continue down that ground until um, we get to the diamond, but not including that diamond. And since we worked through that already, we're just going to continue down the line. Put my cover cloth down a little bit because it's starting to tear. I'm not going to have the whole space to work.
And then we'll leave that and go do our diamond. Make sure to kind of bring your bobbins out of the way until you have that center open. All right, and now we're ready to do that central uh, diamond. So we're going to um, bring in our two in the middle. And this central diamond is going to be in cloth stitch. Uh, so remember that the cloth stitch is the cross twist cross. And this one, um, like the ones before it, it had seven pairs at the widest part. Uh, this one is going to have nine pairs. Um, so just kind of be mindful of that as going forward. So again, we're going to take these middle guys and do a cloth stitch, which is that cross, twist, cross. And then we're going to pin and continue doing the diamond as we did before. Closing that pin and then remembering that the worker pair is on our left side. Um, so we're going to bring in one on this pin. So we're going to cloth stitch through. And because this is the cloth stitch, and as we can see, it's the parallel um, threads on this one, just remember to twist when you're pinning, because um, we'll need that twist in. And then going through this one, we're going to bring in one here. twist and pin and we're just going to keep going um, for the rest of the diamond pulling in a new bobbin each time we go And just making sure um, to keep track of which bobbins are within your diamond. Um, again, I kind of keep this space here um, to delineate which bobbins are in the diamond I'm working and which are outside. Um, I know some people put in pins um, that deviate them. Um, some put the bobbins they're not working with in holders. Um, it's whatever works for you. Um, your lace, lace making practice is yours. Find what works. I find that the space tends to be easier for me um, and I don't have to fiddle with unpinning or getting things caught on things or so it just ends up working better for me. But it's not the same for everyone so definitely find what works best for you. If the space you're finding that you tend your bobbins tend to go amok and that order is really not maintained, then yeah, definitely throw it out and find your own way of ordering your bobbins.
And also your worker pair is going to kind of shorten up quicker than your other bobbins. Um, that's just because it's work, the one going back and forth. So we're covering a lot more space. Um, so definitely feel free to lengthen those workers if it's feeling like it's coming up too short. And if you're not sure if you've hit that widest part yet, or if this pin is the widest part, um, you can figure it out um, two different ways. Um, so we can count what we have um, currently. So if we count, so we have one pair, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So since we have eight, um, we can definitely, we know we need to bring in another pair. Um, we can also, if you don't want to count your bobbins, um, look at our pattern here. Um, so we see this pattern here is here, um, and we have a green pair, a green pair, and then our passives. Um, so looking here, right here, this guy is going to bring in a pair because we only need one green for this guy, and then it goes through the passives and it will come back. Um, so you can do it either way, um, most of the times counting is easiest, but if you want another way of trying to figure out how to read your pattern and see what how to figure out, um, that's another way too. And the more you bop and lace and kind of read your patterns, the easier it becomes. Like anything, practice makes perfect, um, so you just gotta practice it. And so with this, since that's our ninth one, we know we're going to be throwing out pairs. Um, so we're going to take this guy and just move him over um, so that there is a space here so we know not to bring it in and pin it. And again, remember when you're pinning that you're doing that twist in your worker pair. Um, just because it's that cloth stitch, we want to bring that in that twist. And we are going to eventually twist all of our passives coming out of the diamond. Um, you can do it now as we throw them out, or I tend to do it at the end, just kind of making sure I'm not accidentally forgetting anything, because it is very easy to do. So um, either or, you can do it as we throw them out or do it later. And I'm going to do it later, um, so that will be at the end of this diamond. We'll go through and twist all of our passives that have left the diamond. Making sure to tension those bobbins and um, those passes just so you don't have any of the bubbles, any of the um, threads kind of sneaking out of the diamond. Um, just as you work, tensioning is very important. But you also don't want to over tension either, so it's kind of finding that sweet spot. I know I tend to over tension a little bit sometimes, 
Um, that's usually my lace making technique that I need to work on better. But some people tend to do it too loose. Um, and definitely you can take a sample pattern of something, um, do it too loose, do it too tight, and kind of see that difference of it. Um, there's some definitely good worker samples to practice your tensioning. And you can kind of see here, um, the threads right around here are a little bit uh, kind of wonky looking and where I've tightened it's kind of straightened out. Um, so as I tighten these guys it kind of stretches it out and kind of evens them so that puckering isn't there as much. It's a lot easier to see on your pillow, hard to capture that on the video, but you definitely can. And also when you're tensioning, uh, making sure to hold that worker pair. Um, since it's the one going back and forth, that's kind of like that stable shelf that the others are using to pull on. Um, so just holding that taut will also help too if you're finding you can't tension as easily as you would like. All right, and now that we um, are finished with the diamond, we're just gonna go back and make sure to twist all of our passives. Um, I know I've pointed out several times already, but it's very important um, that with torsion, you always wanna twist. So as these come out with that cloth stitch, they're parallel. And as you can see on our other pairs over here, they have that twist. So we just wanna make sure we're applying that twist when we're doing cloth stitches to all of our passives um, so that we aren't losing that twist which can affect the lace going forward. And that's everything and then I'm going to scooch down my cover cloth on the left side and do the ground over here because we're going to do that triangle ground. Um, that ground in a triangle, um, like here, this triangle here, and on this side, and on the right side before doing the next diamond.
And that's the ground triangle for the left side. So we're going to move over to the right side now. Making sure as you're moving your bobbins, um, they are staying in order as best as possible. And we're just going to do the same thing on the right side. Doing that ground of triangle, and then we do the next diamond. And again, just make sure you stop before doing that diamond. So when you get to that area that has the diamond drawing, you don't continue that way. Because that'll be when we do our diamond. Squeak that cover cloth down a bit more.
right, and now we can start, move our bobbins over and get ready to do that next diamond, which will be smaller than the center one. It won't be that um, nine bobbins wide. I think it's going back down to the seven. All right, and we're gonna do um, the next diamond, and because our last diamond was in cloth stitch, we're gonna do this one in half stitch. So we've been alternating cloth stitch, half stitch diamonds. So that's what we're gonna do. And our half stitch is a cross twist. And cross twist. And then again, the worker pair is the left hand side. So we're gonna bring in a pair. And again, your sister bobbins that have been together, um, completely throughout is going to separate and that's okay. As we've seen before, it ends up working out fine. And because this is a cross twist and not a cloth uh, stitch, we don't have to twist our worker pair when we get to that pin, we just can pin it. And again, that's our widest pair. So we're gonna start dropping pairs so we can bring these guys and just scooch them over to the side. So we know not to pin them.
And we're going to do the last diamond before um, we finish. And because we're alternating um, cloth and half stitch, this one is going to end with the cloth stitch diamond. So we're going to do the cross, twist, cross. And again, our worker is the left side, so we're going to bring in one. Remember to twist your worker pair before pinning. Because that's our widest, we're going to start throwing out pairs.
and then we're just going to finish our groundwork and then um, finish the bookmark. And remember, because these are cloth stitches, that um, we want to make sure we twist our pairs that are coming off the diamond.
And with that, we've finished bobbin lacing all of our uh, pinholes. So now we can finish um, off the bookmark. Sorry, just trying to move the camera and ended up making it a little worse. <laughs> Um, okay, so we are going to finish this, um, and it's going to be similar to the, um, Torshawn Ground bookmark in the book, um, which is found on page 32 and 33, um, and pretty much what we're going to be doing is just cloth stitching our, um, greens through and then tying them off. Um, leaving our passives free. Um, on the sample I made before this, um, I, oh, that's too far up. Um, I ended up actually braiding the sides of them, which I think look really nice. Um, so we're going to do that um, on this guy too, just because I think it looks um, nicer and holds it together better. So we're going to start on this left hand side and we're taking the leftmost pair and we're going to cloth stitch through five pairs of bobbins. Um, so we have one, two, three, four, and then our fifth one is the one coming off that diamond. So I'll just kind of move that and we'll just cloth stitch through. together and then we are going to take our pair that's now on the leftmost and we are going to twist it first so do one twist and then we're gonna go through four pairs so pretty much cloth stitching through all the bobbins but not including the first worker Again, just tightening it, kind of get them together, tensioning to get any bubbles out, and continuing this way with the leftmost until we get through all of them. And then we're going to do the same on the right side. I'm just lengthening my bobbins a bit because I ended up I'm a little short and it's just going to give me a little bit more breathing room to do the cloth stitches and tie them up. starting with our leftmost, well now it's rightmost pair, not leftmost. And then we're going to cloth stitch through. And then tie 
I am. And then again, doing the outer most, um, outer rightmost one, we're going to twist and then cloth stitch through. I might have lost one. So, I'm gonna go back and find the one. Okay, so this guy is through here. Okay. All right, just might undo all of these and just make sure I'm going back to the right one. Okay. So we're going to cross these guys that we uncrossed. Wound I gave him, but that's okay. It'll work out. Okay. And again, twist, cloth stitch through. And because for me, um, having this like middle here is kind of weird, so I'll just cloth stitch the middle ones together just to kind of connect them together and just do it a little ways through either side. Just kind of getting that close a little bit better because I found, um, with these patterns, if I don't kind of close it as well um it tends to kind of start uh separating a little bit um maybe it's just in my head but it makes me feel better kind of closing it and interconnecting them a bit so here we're going to bundle them up um it doesn't matter just make sure to leave one of the outermost guys available because that's going to be our tire so we're just going to bunch them up into a little group, open this guy up, and then um, you kind of see where this gap is here, that's where we're going to want our tie to kind of be choked up here so that we get that gap closed, so, I'm sorry, that was a little quick, um, I'll do it again slower, so we're going to take the guy that was on the left side, have a longer string on the bobbin, we're going, so it's on the left side, we're going to bring it forward with the bobbin. Um, we're going to have that circle on the right side, and then the bobbin is going to go underneath our threads, and then through that circle, so the bobbin comes forward, and that goes through that circle, so we're kind of making a loop through it, and then as we pull it tight, we bring it to where we want it, which is that um, area there. And you kind of see it kind of closes it nice and neatly. And then here is where we're going to do a magic thread. Um, so you kind of see how this guy, if it's out, if we end up clipping it, um, it's not going to be nice and neat through these. Um, it'll kind of be off to the side um, and kind of puff out, which we don't want. We want them, um, as you can see here, you can't really tell which thread here was being the one to tie it. 
and that's what we want. We don't want one just sticking out. We want it to be invisible within our lace. Um, so you're going to get a scrap uh, yarn. Um, I tend to do mine bigger just because the more yarn easier it is for me to um, grab it and finagle it with my big fingers. However, you can do smaller. Um, it doesn't necessarily matter the size as long as you're able to lay it across that hitch tie we have here with a loop on that right side. And then again, we're going to do the same hitch, this time with that thread there. So we're going to circle, make that loop, put the bobbin underneath all the threads, and then tighten where that other hitch is. And we're just going to do it, we did it twice without, and we're going to do it twice with, so that there's four total. And now we are going to cut, I mean, you can either cut off the bobbin or unravel it. Um, but the bobbin can't be there going forward because it's very difficult for it to pull it through. Because um, what we're going to happen is we're going to put through, we're going to pull this through these threads here. So it's going to go through and that bobbin is just not going to do that. So we're placing our green um, guy. Here, let me see if I put a cover cloth. Does that help you see better? A little bit. All right, so we have that loop, we have the guy we cut off, putting it through that loop, not pulling it all the way. We want a, um, a loop still here, and then we're going to grab the ends of that magic thread and we're going to pull it through while holding on to this guy. So pulling it, and then once it comes through, we go all the way, and there it will lie nice and neatly. And like I said, um, the book doesn't call for it like this um, to braid our um, ends, but I think it looks kind of nice doing it that way. Um, so I'm going to do that. And it really doesn't matter um, which braid you do, you can do a claw stitch half stitch, um, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you don't even have to do a stitch, you can just kind of braid them going like a normal braid. And then tightening it so it's a little more tight and just kind of going through and see how it's getting a nice little braid going. Um, I do the criss cross twist cross um, so that half stitch no claw stitch i'm sorry my bad guys so and usually that second time through is when you tighten um i tend to over braid it a little bit um because then i can cut it if i want it shorter but i don't have to really go and that will probably be good length um for it because it'll be ending where the tassel ends and I don't want the tassel to be too long so it'll probably end right about here with the tassel so that's probably a good length for the braid and doing it on that right side with these guys I have to lengthen them a bit because they're too short for that length um, and then cross twist cross And I mean, you don't even have to do like a normal stitch here either. You can just braid it however you want. Or just twist it. It doesn't even have to be a braid. And that is about there. Okay. So we are going to now leave our, um, so... We end it there. We have our bookmark nicely um, laced, but um, you kind of want it to let it set a bit. Let the threads kind of get used to their place. Let the pins keep it um, stationary and supportive. 
and we are going to let it sit. Um, you can do it anywhere between a couple hours to 24 hours. Um, I tend to do it for 24 hours. It helps keep the lace stable and pretty um, going forward and doesn't let it warp as easily. Um, so when you're done, just make sure before you end that you place your cover cloth over your lace, um, especially if you have any kind of pets, kids, whatever, um, just dirt in the air, or anything like that. We want to protect our lace, so we want to make sure that we keep it covered if we're not actively working on it, just to keep it pristine and out of the way. Um, and then we will come back in 24 hours and take it off of the pins. Dun, dun, dun. Hey everyone and welcome back. It's been 24 hours so we're going to take off our cover cloth and we are going to cut off the bobbins from uh, the pricking. So I left mine on so we just need to cut it off. We'll scooch this up a little bit. Um, so however long you want your tassel to be is fine. Um, I tend to kind of start long um, and then kind of cut it shorter as needed. So we'll do cut through here, put the bottoms off to the side, and see Let's see, that might be, seems a little long. I'm going to take off this undercover since we don't need it anymore. Since um, we no longer have buttons, just to kind of help measure it out a little bit. Even though that really whitewashes it out for you, doesn't it? So, never mind. We'll put this back. <laughs> I forgot about the, I didn't realize the undercover was going to make it difficult to see. So... Well, kind of, so if I want, want a little bit of a tassel, but kind of not as much as this, so. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It looks like a good length to me. So, after that, we'll just take out our pins and um, get and have the lace finished. I tend to use something to hold um, down the lace as I pull out the pins just to kind of help keep it from lifting with the pins. Um, this is especially if you have your stitch nestled tight on the pins. Um, sometimes it'll want to lift out, um, which can warp your lace. So having this kind of stationary kind of helps keep it from lifting and help keep it um, easier to just continue pulling things out.
just angle this up slightly so you can see since I'm starting to get closer to the top. That is our finished piece. So we have the diamonds, um, we have the cloth stitch half stitch alternating, the um, middle one here is the longest diamond, and we have finished off with some braiding and tassels. Um, as you can see, you can alternate colors between the side passes and the inner one or you can keep them the same um, or slightly off color like if you have a beige and then you want a stark white um, or vice versa um, and that way you should have a good 
Torshan bookmark with diamonds. And if you like this video and would like to see more or would like to support um, an artist, I, def I have a Patreon that you can um, donate to and I would be happy to have shoutouts for anyone that wants to help. Um, otherwise, the next video will try to be quicker than it was with this video, uh, but with life and stuff, hard to tell, but I'll try to be better about being more consistent with it for you guys. Thank you all for watching and for your comments. I love seeing that and I'll talk to you all later.